church, the Holy Spirit of God is flowing today, amen, and I'm always ready to receive from the Holy Spirit. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 24, I mean, I'm sorry, verse 21, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Now, I told the Holy Spirit, I said, I had the revelation knowledge of that, and the Holy Spirit said, there is always higher revelation knowledge. There is always deeper places in God. And the Holy Spirit was telling me that in 1 Samuel chapter 26 and verse 12 establishes the deep sleep. Now here we go church. This is what I want you to see right here. It is the good stuff. Amen. I'll show you something about this deep sleep. Job chapter 33 and verse 14, 15, 16, and 17. It says, God speaketh. Job had a revelation, I tell you. God speaketh in a vision once, yea, twice. Yet man perceives it not in a dream, in a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon man. In slumbering upon the bed, then he opens the ears of man and sealeth their instructions. Verse 17 that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Adam's in a deep sleep, church. He's asleep. When he creates the woman, she's asleep too. So they're both in a deep sleep. We see that their not, eyes are not open until after they eat of that fruit and they sin. Their eyes are then open. So uh, Adam and his wife are still in a deep sleep. And Job just told us that in that sleep, God gives you visions and dreams and seals your instructions, but man does not perceive it. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 6, he saith, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. So Adam was a prophet. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 10 and 11 for the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, the prophets, and your rulers, and the seers, hath he closed. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. Joel chapter 12 and verse 28. It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You hear that, church? Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Verse 18. And on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. When did he do this, church? Job 33 and 14 through 17 says, God speaketh in a vision once, twice, yet man perceives it not. In a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon man, and slumbering, then he opens the ears of man and sealeth his instructions. That's why Adam was in a deep sleep. But Adam could not perceive it. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 7, Jesus said, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Adam and his wife were the church. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, Remember, God took the woman out of the side of Adam and pierced his side. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. In Genesis chapter 2 and 23, Adam says, The woman is now bone of my bone and flesh of his flesh. She was more than that, church. Him and her shared the same spirit, the same soul. God divided everything that was on Adam and in Adam. He divided the flesh. He divided the spirit. He divided the soul. He divided the bones. Whatever Adam was, she was, because they were one. In the book of John 19 and verse 34, we see that our husband, our bridegroom, Jesus Christ, who we will be married to in Revelations 19, 7 and 8, we see that the side of Jesus was pierced. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 27 through verse 31, the church. Listen to this church. It's good stuff right here. 
verse 27, that he might present it, present it to himself, a glorious church. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 22, God made the woman and brought her into the man and presented her. That's what he did, church. When he brought the woman to Adam, he was presenting Adam to his church. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17. Oh, and you also see in verse 23 that Adam called her woman because she was taken out of man. I got deeper revelation on that woman part, but I just don't think y'all are able to receive that one because that one is a, whoo, it's some revelation, all right. I'll, I'll say that until the Holy Spirit releases me to give you that revelation. But we see Adam named her. Revelations chapter 2 and 17, our husband, bone of our bone, flesh of his flesh. He's going to give us a name. He's going to write down our name. Amen. Because our husband's going to give us a new name that's written down in heaven. Oh, glory. I can't wait. I can't wait. So what did we see, church? We see that while Adam and his wife were the church and they were in a deep sleep, God spoke to them in dreams and in visions. And Adam could not perceive it because he was not learned. Genesis chapter 2 and 21, the deep sleep God put upon Adam. Job 33 and verse 14 and 16, he sealeth his instructions. Job 33 and 14, man perceived it not, he did not understand it. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 13 and 14. Jesus said they did not understand. They did not perceive it because they were asleep. So we see, church, God spoke to Adam through his dreams and visions while he was in a deep sleep. God gave him instructions, but Adam did not perceive it. That's why Jesus keeps telling us, He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Because in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 21, when God put the deep sleep upon Adam and on his wife that were the church, he tried to speak to them in dreams and visions. He tried to instruct them. He sealed their instructions. But they could not perceive it, nor could they understand it. And we see after they sinned, their eyes were open. Because they could not perceive nor understand the visions and the dreams that God gave to them. God bless you, church. I hope you like that revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God, because it is the good stuff. Amen, church. Amen. God bless you today, and I thank God for each and every one of you. Now, my vacation is supposed to begin today, but I was planning on leaving Monday. But, listen to me, church. If the Holy Spirit of God wants me to continue on uh, giving things to the church, then that's what I'll do, because I'll tell you what, he's first. Do you hear me, church? He is first in my life. Everything else is last. I'm here to do what he sends me out here to do. And I obey him and not this flesh. So you keep lifting me up in your prayers. And I thank you for your prayers. And God bless you. And I am praying for every one of you too. My dear precious friends. That I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. God bless you.